Hey guys, it's Crystal Lee Moore Lucier here, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore. And this is Realtor Life, a fun and entertaining look at life in the trenches as a real estate professional in Ontario and an entrepreneur. So today we're going to talk about the importance of lead generation, relationships, networking, and energy. So let's dive right in. I am a real estate professional in London, Ontario. I got started in Ottawa, Ontario, and then I worked in Guelph, Ontario, where my home was for eight years. And it is is great to finally kind of be somewhere where I'm sticking, but oh my goodness, the journey. And hopefully you can learn from my experience. So right away let's just get into lead generation so as a realtor as an entrepreneur the only way you're really making money which is the whole point of working um, you want to give back but you need to pay your bills so how are you at the end of the day going to do that how are you going to find people that want to work with you that want to pay you for your services um, and how are you going to do that on a consistent basis? Because what happens with a lot of real estate professionals, and I mean, it happens in every business. So I do think that this is relevant for anyone who works for themselves. But what happens is sometimes you'll get, you'll get someone that comes to you and, and you help them and that's fantastic. Um, but you don't really know how you got that client. So what happens to a lot of people is they'll, they'll get clients and they'll start to get busy and there's not really a way to systemize that and there's not a way to rely on it. So a lot of times people or realtors or entrepreneurs will be on this roller coaster of income where you have some, then you have none, then you have some, then you have none. And that would be fine if not for the fact that everyone that needs money from you for bills, for mortgage, for taxes, for services, for anything, they're their payment requirements are not on the same schedule. So your mortgage is due every month, regardless of whether you made money. Your taxes are due, regardless of what's going on. So it's important to figure out how to systemize. And so one of the things we do is we try to work by referral and constantly be adding people into your network. And that doesn't mean just to kind of add a bunch of strangers or start cold calling. I do a lot of coaching with Buffini and Company, and one of the things that we talk about is making sure that you are focusing on, on your sphere, your circle of influence, your sphere of influence, however you want to call it. These are people that you know, um, and the people that you know hopefully can introduce you to people that they know, and that's kind of how we, we build this referral network. So you do a good job for someone, they see the kind of professional that you are, and then you work really hard to get them to, to connect you with other people. And that's kind of the goal is that if you can focus on that, it is actually six times more expensive to meet a new client than it is to cultivate a relationship with someone that you already know. So the only problem with things like that is that they're not sexy. The fundamentals are can be boring, right? So if you know, for example, I have a list of people that I have to call every day and I have to send out a certain number of personal notes which we'll talk about in one second and I also have to give a certain number of pop by gifts so it's down to a system that if I reach out for every 19 people I talk to I should get one referral and for every seven referrals I get I should get one closed deal and that's kind of, that's with Buffini and company down to a science. So when we're sitting there and going, oh, I don't have a client right now. If you go through all of your data and you go through all of your computer programs and your lead, your leads, your people, your contacts, have you reached out to 19 times seven people today? And if you have not, get going. Because it can be easy to think, oh, I'll just sign up for this lead, this lead system. Uh, the ROI on those lead systems is pretty low. So yes, it might feel good to have a client who's physically in front of you, but if you do those fundamentals, if you reach out to people and you stay in touch and you make sure that you are giving them the best service and the best customer experience, 
you're really setting yourself up for success versus just kind of hoping the phone will ring or paying a bunch of money for leads that aren't aren't much better than just cold calling. So that's just my my opinion, my experience, but definitely the lead generation is important. And if you're not sure where to start, they always do that little that little game which is kind of write down everyone you know. And you can start with write down 10 people you know. Okay, 10 more, 10 more. And you'll find that there's a lot of people that you can write down and then check, are they in your database? I do a little test with my colleagues and some of the people that I mentor and we say, okay, go through all of your social media chats, go through your Facebook messenger chats, your Instagram chats, your WhatsApp chats, your text chats, like go through all of it and test yourself. Are these people in your database? Can you track these conversations? And even with me, I've been doing this for 13 years, even with me there's always going to be someone that hasn't made it in. So you just make sure you get them in there because they deserve to be reached out to on a consistent basis. If you're trying to give them advice, if you're trying to help them, you're going to do a better job of it if you can track it. So that's one thing. Then the other thing is networking. So networking as an entrepreneur is very important. And I think most people would say they've been invited to a networking event, they've gone to a networking event. Are you doing it properly? So when you go to a networking event, your key is to meet new people. Not necessarily to go and meet new friends. I mean, yes, you can always meet new friends, but you're going there usually during work hours to meet people for business. And so when you go, I know I heard a long time ago, a really good plan. Before you go, make a decision, make a a goal. So maybe it's, I'm going to meet three new people. And when you go, you're going to chat with people. And it is very frustrating uh, if you go and someone just hands you their card and they're like, hey, I'm so-and-so, this is what I do, would love to work with you. And then they walk away don't be that person. Um, But if that person wanted to get to know you, you might get to know a little bit more about them. And then as you build a relationship, you might be able to send business their way. So I think one of the things that I've taught when I do my networking groups is remember why you're there. So if you think about like a, a layered approach, so the first reason you're there is to get to know people and for them to get to know you, obviously. But that networking event is not a substitute for a meeting. It's not a substitute for a coffee. This is a first point of contact. You're asking a few questions, um, which is important. And you're also going to find out a little bit more about, about people. So when you go, let's say you go to an event. Let's say it's an evening event. You say, I'm going to meet three new people. So you go, even if they hand you the card, start asking them questions. Number one, get their name. Try to remember it. This is all kind of 101 from how to win friends and influence people. But I'm going to give you a few tips that will make you love networking more if you don't already love it. Um, But you also won't go home exhausted because the fun fact is you're actually not going to talk about yourself very much at all. So you go, let's say you meet Bob. Bob is a mortgage agent have a chat with Bob. So really you're gonna ask a few questions. Okay, awesome, thanks Bob. Like, how long have you been a mortgage agent? That's awesome, what got you into that? Cool. Um, And then you take Bob's card and you say, you can introduce yourself, say I'm like, for me, I'm Crystal, I'm a real estate broker. I've been doing this for about 13 years. I absolutely love it. Um, But you're not going super deep on this because there's a room of people and you both are there to meet new people. So you say, thanks so much. It was great to connect, keep the card, move on. So then you're talking to a few more people after the event. And this is where most people don't, don't do it. Take the cards, reach out to everyone, and then put these people in your database. Please hear my words, put these people into your database, not put these people onto your mailing list (laughs) into your database. And you can, so oftentimes I'll have kind of a client version of of a connection, but I also have a business side. 
Um, being in three different cities, I have very good tips on how to start a business from zero, um, but also just to make sure that you're building that network because people are going to work with you when they get to know you. And a lot of businesses will write off other businesses because they don't think of them as potential lead sources or referral sources. And I would say that that is where we're missing out on the ability to connect. So, so let's go back to Bob. So you go home after the event, add Bob into the database and then send him a note. It can be an email, it can be a text, it can be a a note in the mail. I recommend both. So I would say an email, hey Bob, it's Crystal Lee Moore here. It was great to meet you at this networking event. I'd love to grab a coffee and learn a little bit more about you and your business. Now, not enough people do this. So it's not, I would love you to send me your business. It's not, I would love to start sending you business because I don't really know that much about Bob yet. It's, I would love to sit down with you for a coffee. Um, And then you send him a note in the mail, an, an actual note card with a stamp on it. And you say, hey, Bob, great to meet you at that event. Looking forward to connecting again. I hope you have a great day. That's it. Very simple. Now, you've given Bob two opportunities to see that you are interested in connecting. Bob has a choice. So if you get one of these emails or you get a card from someone, you have a choice. You can say, I don't want to meet with anyone who is not an active client. That's a choice. Um, I don't recommend that choice, but it is a choice. You can also say, absolutely, let's do it. Because what's going to happen is this. You have a meeting and you get to know each other. Whether Bob has a client for you or not is irrelevant. And whether you have a client for him yet is irrelevant because you're getting to know each other. So guess what? Let's say Bob needs some new business cards. You also met Sarah. Sarah at the event does business cards. So you have an opportunity now to give some goodwill so you can refer Bob to Sarah. And isn't that great? So Sarah's first encounter with you other than the email and the card that you sent her, is that you're supporting her business. And then you just grow it that way. So a lot of um, when you're in business, you're cost conscious and that makes sense. Of course you should be cost conscious, but something like an online printing company is great, probably cheaper than working with Sarah. But that online company probably is never going to give you a referral or thank you for for your business. Um, So when you're building, always look, any dollar you spend, try to spend it in a way that will somehow help another business and maybe even help your business. And even even if Sarah never sends you a client directly, she might send you someone who sends you someone who sends you a client. And then same thing, with with Bob he's sitting down with you for coffee investing that time and then you might know a colleague who might want to work with Bob so it's just and you put all of this in your database so it's not guesswork it's just putting in the time Um, I've known mortgage people and and other business people and, and even realtors who if it's not an active client they don't have time and and that's okay it's again we're not here to judge it's just you're really saying, I don't have time for you and your relationship. Unless you're coming with a business, like an actual active file, you don't matter to me. That's the message it's sending. So just be careful about that. And if you don't have time to meet in person, you can do a Zoom meeting. Um, And you can't meet with everyone, that is fair, but that's why you pick a few people at an event and see if you have sort of a, a connection. Like, do you seem like you have the same values? Does someone love what they do and you love what you do? And wouldn't it be nice to help people together? So that's that's kind of that that thing. And with the note, the notes and the little Popeyes, you could pop by um, if there's an, a, an office location, pop by and say, hey, I was just in the area. I just want to bring you these cookies or this whatever you're bringing. Um, and you track that in your in your database uh, with Buffini it's the referral maker, but it's really it's really great. And then the very last thing is just with relationships and energy. So as you're building your database, and you're surrounding yourself with this great network um, and helping each other, that's when to tap into who are you surrounding yourself with. Make sure there are people that are actually helping who you are and helping lift you up. Um, I had a, 
a situation yesterday where I was super stressed out. I was just very overwhelmed. And one of my colleagues just kind of went out of her way, sent me this super cute photo um, of my own parking job, I would say, but super cute photo and just really just made me smile and laugh. And that's the thing. Are there people around you who are lifting you up or are there people around you bringing you down? You want to be around those lifting you up people because as an entrepreneur, as a realtor, your biggest asset, the most important thing you're protecting all the time is you. So your energy, your heart, your mind, all of it. You cannot be allowing yourself to get dragged down because then not only are you not going to be able to do a good job for people, you're robbing them and yourself of the ability to have a great day and a great life. Um, And that's what we're all doing this for. So whether it's listening to a podcast um, about energy or making yourself laugh, or um, I was at, I'm one of the sponsors for Little Engines live here in London with Kevin Bulmer, uh, the no schedule man. And he was talking about how he was kind of feeling bummed out. And then he went out scrolling on YouTube and found this um, awesome safety dance video of dancing and singing and it just cheered him up and music is so powerful that way dancing moving your body like it's all it's all there and uh it's it's truly amazing so if you're ever having a bad day and you just need to get out of it go for a walk um i know my husband he's big on the fresh air if he's if he's feeling ugh, he'll he'll walk somewhere or do the fresh air thing for me it's dancing singing uh, working out um, it really depends on what what you need we went to jeans and classics in London last night and if ever if there's a jeans and classics near you and you have a chance to go it's the coolest thing this was Motown and disco and it's these amazingly talented singers and musicians so it's a whole uh, rock orchestra or rock finny rock symphony whatever they call it um, and just you could see everyone dancing in their chairs, but then at the end, everyone was on their feet dancing and you just leave feeling refreshed. So those are the things. So just to recap, lead generation, it's very important. Uh, networking, how to make it work for you. B- making sure that you're as you're building those relationships, you're surrounding yourself with people that lift you up and you can lift them up too. And then protect your energy and just try to get in that peak state if you can. So I am Crystal Lee Moore Lucier, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore, and I hope you guys have an amazing day.